this point in the class, you've seen several videos on international trade. International trade was literally one of the first major political issues that economists tackled. Adam Smith, the very first economist, uh, commented that humans have a natural tendency to truck, barter, and exchange. In the first ever book written about economics, The The Wealth of Nations, Smith argued that specialization and trade would cause nations to prosper and become wealthy. Shortly after, a clever fellow named David Ricardo introduced the concept of comparative advantage. He showed that even if country A does everything better than country B, the two should still trade because of the opportunity cost. Each country should specialize doing what they do best, and then trade to get what they didn't make. How important is trade to generating wealth, and how does trade impact the well-being of a group of people? It's essential. Think about this. When the U.S. has a disagreement with another nation, like North Korea, Cuba, or Iran, we impose economic sanctions. We ban trade with that country and encourage our political and military allies to do the same. Imposing autarky turns out to be a very nasty weapon of war. It doesn't matter if you're importing or exporting. A step toward free trade will make your nation overall better off. The math on that is easy. Economists have known it forever. That means reducing trade barriers, getting rid of import tariffs, import quotas, export subsidies, letting exchange rates float, and eliminating domestic policies that distort trade will make a country's economy grow and make a nation better off. But there are but there are two problems. First, when you open a country to trade, some groups will win and others will lose. Overall, the gains outweigh the losses, but trade will change the distribution of wealth inside of a nation. This means that there's money to be made or lost based on a political decision implying that people are going to lobby in an attempt to influence the political process in their favor. Second, and perhaps the most overlooked aspect, is the factor price equalization theorem, which works just like the name implies. When two countries open up their borders and trade with each other, the factor prices in the two countries will begin moving toward each other. In a perfectly competitive environment with no trade restrictions, the factor prices will equalize. Well, what the heck does that mean? Factors are inputs used to produce things. The classical economic production model has two factors, two inputs, capital and labor. The price of labor is typically called a wage. According to the factor price equalization theorem, the wage rates in the two countries will trend toward each other when you open the nations up to trade. So if country A has a very high wages... Wages will fall in country A when country A opens up to trade. If country B has very low wages, wages will rise in country B. So the wages will start coming closer together in the two countries. And if we're talking about two developed wealthy nations, the kind of place that's characterized by high wages, France and Germany, for example, uh, then so what? No big deal. But what if we're talking about trade between the U.S. and China? Well, it's great for China. The overall economy will grow due to the positive impacts of trade, plus wages will increase. Let's pull up a chart from the World Bank showing poverty rates in China over time. It's quite dramatic. You can see 750 million people, 66.2% of the population are in poverty in 1990, back when I was in high school. In 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization, and we see a big drop in in the 90s, and then it just continues to drop. And over time, the poverty headcount rate, the percentage of people who are below the poverty line, has just continued to drop to the point where it's really low, especially compared to where it started off. But what about that middle-class factory worker that was the backbone of the U.S. economy for ages? You know the guy with the high school education? that just had to show up for work on time every day and he can make enough money to feed his family and buy a few nice things and make his house payment. Here's an article on NPR that references the work of husband and wife team um, Ann and Angus. I do believe Angus won a Nobel Prize recently. And y'all, let me tell you, it's not good. The forces driving middle-aged white people's death of despair. And y'all, there's a little chart here that shows 
what has happened. Uh, this is uh, non-Hispanic whites aged 45 to 54. It's the death rate per 100,000 in 2000. Um, compared to 2014, as you can see, that death rate has climbed in a lot of places and climbed by a lot. So this is not good. Now, I'm not saying all of that can be attributed to international trade. A significant proportion was caused by automation. But what I am saying is that trade can be a double-edged sword. We as a nation are better off when we open up our borders to trade. When we import, when we export, no matter what we do, trading will make us better off. It will cause the economy to grow. If you think about it, the technology that I'm using right now in order to record this video, it didn't exist when I was a college student in the 1990s. And the, you know, the quality that I can get with just a cell phone and a microphone that's relatively inexpensive and some very basic software for editing a video is a whole lot better than what I could have gotten with several thousand dollars worth of equipment, um, maybe tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment and like an entire production studio. Um, so trades definitely made us better off. We're able to buy more things even if our incomes are lower. We have a higher standard of living. We have access to better technology and amazing gadgets and the internet and all kind of great stuff. So I don't doubt that we're better off due to trade and automation, all the things that have happened since I was a college student. I think we're definitely better off. And what we see happening is that inequality within countries, or, or, um, within developed countries, seems to be going up while poverty in less developed countries is going down. We definitely want the poverty to decrease and we want the improved quality of life. But at the same time, um, it creates some other problems that have to be dealt with. And I don't know the answer to those, but I do know that if you understand the factor price equalization theorem, a lot of the debate surrounding international trade makes more sense. So again, the factor price equalization theorem says that when two countries trade, the factor prices in those countries will tend to equalize, meaning they will become the same thing. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.